Hello and welcome, my name is Lexi and today we're gonna to be talking about a few new products. So we're going to include the new Hourglass. This is the Diffused Rose Edit. It's a limited edition trio that has been released on the Hourglass website. We're gonna flip the Clay de Poe cushion. We're gonna take a look at the Bake Up Beauty Desert Road Trip palette. And this is one of their micro minis. And then we're also gonna take a look at the new Victoria Beckham Baby Blade the brow pencil, which, spoiler, I'm loving this. And then also the Sisley New Fido Cold Star, which these are my favorite eyeliners. They released a new shade. This is 11 Mystic Gold. So we're gonna take a look at this. And I also have a wear test with it in the waterline. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start off with the, let's actually start with the cushion. So I have two favorite cushion foundations. That would be the Sisley. This is the Fido Blanc Le Cushion, which I absolutely love. But, you know, unfortunately, I, I do wish that they had a more expansive shade range than they do because the shade that I have is 00C and it's still just a little bit too dark. However, the Clay de Poe Cushion gives me the perfect shade. And I use shade I-10. And I've been using both of these cushions for quite a while. I'm actually on my second cushion for the Sisley. And it's time to flip the cushion for the Clay de Poe. So if you haven't used a cushion foundation before, you know, when you start using it, I still like to use mine with a brush. I use the mini Kyoto, um, I think it's the F02, the Fupa 2. And yeah, I love this brush. This is cute. The pink was a limited edition color. I'm not sure if it's still available, but I'll link it down below if it is. And then the cushion, you know, when you're not getting as much product up, instead of just switching to a new cushion, you can flip it. So I like to flip my cushions probably about three to four times before I actually put in a refill. And that's one of the great things about both the Sisley and the Clay de Poe is that they do take refills. Now the Sisley, just so you know, they don't sell the refills in the US. I purchased my refill from Selfridges and you know, actually the Sisley items there are significantly less expensive than the US site. So definitely take a look at Selfridges. Uh, it's definitely worth the $55 global shipping rate if you are going to be purchasing a lot of Sisley or fragrances. You know, those are all items that are significantly less expensive on the Selfridges site. And so basically you pay $55 for shipping for one year. So it starts one year from whenever you decide to do that. And you just need to have a minimum of, I believe it's $55 as well in your cart to get the free shipping. Otherwise, I think it's like a $30 one-time shipping fee. So this does pop out. And let's go ahead and get this out here. So I just closed this and then I just pushed from behind to snap this out. So if you were to replace the refill, that's what you would do to replace it. I just find it a little bit easier and less messy to also flip my cushion this way. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and lift this. So on most cushions, this little like edge part actually comes up and you can easily flip it. I can't tell if this one does or not, but I'm having trouble getting it up. So I'm taking a little spatula from a uh, foundation and I'm just going to lift this and flip it over. And you can see how much more foundation is here and actually inside there as well. So that's gonna absorb into the other side. So I'll be able to flip it again and get plenty more foundation. So I'll definitely be able to do this a few times and then definitely don't waste this. Save what what's come up, use it for that day. So that would be my recommendation. And then just close this up and just snap it back in. So it is a little messy to change or flip your cushion, but totally worth it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the new Hourglass palette. So Hourglass has released two new six pan palettes and this trio and i passed on the six pan palettes the sculpt and set one actually sold out like immediately and hourglass is not planning on restocking that so just so you know and then there's a, a blush and glow palette as well which both of these palettes have repeat shades some of them were limited editions previously some of them are ones that are easier to find so you know just something to know but this is the diffused rose edit and i just think it's really beautiful so we actually have two new shades the highlighter and the blush 
are both going to be new. So the powder is the diffused, oh, sorry, the powder is the diffused light powder. So we've seen that many times. And then we have Rose Flush is a blush and the highlighter is Supernova Strobe Light. So let's take a look at this. And here is our powder. And you can see it's a neutral leaning warm, you know, pressed powder. I think the hourglass powders are nice. It's a diffused light, so you know, you are gonna get a little bit of radiance. But let's take a look at this blush. So the blush here, this is, this is it. I mean, look at that, that's really pretty. So it's kind of a, again, we're looking at neutral leaning warm, rose blush you definitely have some of those like deeper rose tones in there it's not going to be one of those like brighter pink roses you're looking more at a classic tea rose and then the supernova strobe light highlighter i mean i like these highlighters because you can put it on very subtly with something like a fan brush which i'll show you in a minute or you can really bling it out like this so this you can see is kind of a warm champagne but it's not too golden. So I have to say, I, I really like this trio. Let's take a look at the demos here. So just some information about this palette. The trio does retail for 69 US dollars and at the current time, it is exclusive to the Hourglass website. I don't know if it will be available at other retailers later, but it is limited edition. My guess is you're going to have to purchase it from Hourglass. So again, as I mentioned, the powder is a you know, frequently seen shade, whereas the blush and the highlighter are both new shades. Each one of the shades is 2.8 grams of product. We have a one year shelf life and this is made in Italy. So, you know, this palette is meant to give you kind of a lit from within glow. I typically don't pick up the hourglass palettes because a lot of times there are shades that you know, I, they just don't work perfectly well for me. But this trio, I think, is really great for, for fair skin. It's going to work well for fair to light skin. Once you're getting into the medium and the deeper colors, you know, as we've seen from Hourglass before, it's not going to work quite as well. So another feature of Hourglass in general is that they are vegan and cruelty-free, and there are no synthetic fragrances in this palette. So I think that's definitely something you know great here. So as you can see, you get a little bit of blurring. You get kind of this luminosity, lit from within type of glow with both the face powder as well as the blush, the highlighter. Again, you can put this on kind of more sparingly or really get that strobe light that it is named for. So. Overall, I think this is a really nice Hourglass Trio if these are colors that you are looking for. Now, Hourglass releases palettes like this periodically, typically in the fall, and I usually don't gravitate towards them. This color story really did speak to me, and you know, I think it would be really nice to see Hourglass release a few of these, either you know all at the same time or kind of in a series, like every couple of months a new one would come out, but we would know in advance that it was a series that would be continuing. And I'd love to see like different color stories. You know, there could be some obviously for deeper skin tones that would work better, but even just some different tones as well, like peachier tones and so forth as well maybe even a cooler pink, you know, with a touch of lavender. I think that would be gorgeous. So I would love to see more like this. I personally prefer the three pants over the six pants because I feel like in the six pants, there's always one or two shades that I'm not going to use. So I feel like I have a better shot with the trios. So I'd love to know what your thoughts are. Let's do a few comparisons. The first thing I wanted to compare it to is the Bobbi Brown Sculpt and Glow palette. This is the light one that just came out. So Bobbi Brown came out with this same type of trio in general. It's a little different. We have a highlighter, a blush, and a bronzer shade. But they came out with three different color stories at once. One for light, medium, and deeper skin tones. So, um, you know, that's kind of better. <laughs> so let's go ahead and swatch this. I did want to see you know, how these compare. So we're gonna put these vertically so you can see. You can see that the highlighter from Bobbi Brown, this is our typical rose glow highlighter that is iconic to the brand. You can see it's kind of a warm peachy rose shimmery shade. They both have a lot of luminosity. You can see though that the Hourglass is just slightly more luminous. One of the great things about both highlighters though is the way they apply and they both apply very similarly. You can build them up 
or you know diffuse them a little bit so overall i think both highlighters are great both formulas are fantastic this here is the blush and you can see color wise it definitely has a similarity to that in the hourglass this blush is called full flush and again the one in the hourglass palette is called rose flush so similar names even you can see that the Bobbi Brown is a little bit warmer in tone. There's just a, a little bit more of that coral note to it compared to the Hourglass. Now, formula-wise, the Bobbi Brown is more firmly pressed, more baked in the pan than the Hourglass. They're both baked, but this is just a little bit firmer. And then this is the contour shade in the Bobbi Brown. We'll just put this all the way to the side because that is obviously not going to go with the powder here. So between the two of those palettes, I think both of them are great options. It really depends on what you're looking for. The Bobbi Brown though is a little bit less expensive than the Hourglass, so that's something to note as well. And size on the Bobbi Brown is four and a half grams each instead of the two, what was it, 2.8? Yes, 2.8 grams each. So the Bobbi Brown is technically a better value, but again, it's all about what you're going to use more. Let's take a look at a few Seurat shades. This is the Too Maffei Rougier in the blush. And let's see how this paint compares. You can see it's gonna be cooler in tone than the Hourglass. And I wanted to compare this highlighter shade from Seurat. This is the Oriole shade. And I love this. This is gonna be a little bit more um, subtle on the skin. But you can see the tone, the color, is very similar to Supernova. So they have a very similar shade, but this is just a more subtle version. So if the Hourglass highlighters are too much for you, then the Seurat and Oriole might be a, a great alternative. And that's spelled A-U-R-E-O-L-E. -E. So not like Oriole the bird. And then this is my all-time favorite face palette. This is the Burberry Essentials Glow Palette. This one here is in light to medium. I wanted to compare the pink with the and the white highlighter here. So let's go ahead and swatch these two. And here is the pink from the Burberry. I'm gonna put that, let's go ahead, I'm gonna put the Hourglass right next to it, but you can see that the Burberry highlighter is going to be more white. Let's go ahead and check those out. So here's the Burberry highlighter, I'm sorry, the Hourglass highlighter. So you can see it's more champagne. And here's the Hourglass blush. So you can see that it's gonna be a little bit more matte. The Burberry has a bit more of a sheen to it, and it's also gonna be a cooler toned rose. And last up, this is the Charlotte Tilbury Beautifying Face Palette that came out not too long ago. This is the Pillow Talk in Fair Medium. So that was this packaging. Let's take a look at these. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at this pink blush. We're gonna go ahead and put that here. So you can see it's still a little bit cooler in tone. It's actually closer to the Burberry. It's gonna be a little bit more matte. And then let's take a look at this highlight here. That one's more coral. And then here's the pink one. That's gonna be more pink. So you can see those don't quite go, but the blush shade will be similar in the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk palette. So I hope that was helpful. Let's go ahead and move on. We're going to take a look at the Bake Up Beauty shadows. So Bake Up Beauty is a new makeup brand started by Joe Baker, the pretty famous makeup artist, and also Grace Gusta, who I'm not familiar with, but she is a recording artist, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced her name. But they have released these little micro minis, and I have featured these a little bit in another video with some of the brighter shades, the purples, but, and I'll, I'll feature the, the rest of those palettes and swatches of those another time. But I wanted to start with this one because this is a new favorite of mine. This is the Desert Road Trip palette. These are called the Micro Palm palettes, and you know, it's mini cheap plastic packaging, very, very lightweight. It's meant to be portable, easy to slip in your pocket or bag. And the shadows, they're really more like pressed pigments. So we've got eight shades here. Let's go ahead and swatch these. So this is the top row. You can see we've already got some beautiful neutral mattes. And the bottom row here, again, we're sticking with neutrals, but we have this little pop of kind of a dusty rose shade in here as well. We've got some lighter and deeper shades throughout the palette. 
and it really makes it more versatile. So this last shade here, it looks black, but it's actually gonna be one of those super deep black browns. There is a touch of brown in there. So these are the eight shades in the palette, and you know, these act more as a pressed pigment. So formula-wise, they remind me a lot of those in the Hindosh palette. So we'll take a look at that in a minute, but let's look at a couple demos while we talk about this. So Makeup Beauty was started to kind of provide like fun little makeup pieces. They've got a lot of you know bright color palettes. They've got some like sticker things for the face and so forth. So it's just kind of like fun. Their actual tagline is we play where you play. And this particular palette is the first one that they have that is like neutrals. Everything else so far has been very bright and colorful, really beautiful, but formula wise, they all perform the same. The palette retails for 24 US dollars on their website. You do get free shipping over $40, but they also have a, a little set where you can purchase their trio of eye brushes with the this particular palette for $39. So just under that free shipping minimum there. Now a little bit about this, we do have a two year shelf life on here and it's 4.1 grams. And as I mentioned, it is incredibly light break, lightweight. It is made in China and the brand itself is located in Arizona. Now, according to Baker Beauty, this is the last neutral palette you'll ever need. Joe Baker has curated an eyeshadow palette of eight universally flattering, effortlessly chic neutral tones. This palm-sized palette fits in your back pocket or on the back of your phone. These foolproof, buttery, buildable shades will take you from Monday morning to Saturday night and everything in between. So go on, live life in timeless, sultry color. One of the great things about this palette is it has both cool and warm hues. It was inspired by earthy desert scapes. And according to Bake Up Beauty, these high performance eyeshadows provide maximum payoff without additives like parabens, talc, and phthalates. They are vegan and cruelty free, made with thoughtfully chosen ingredients that bridge quality and efficacy. The shadows were designed to be used either with brush, fingers, whatever you choose. They're meant to be playful and easy to use. I would say that's accurate. And again, the palette is about the size of a credit card. So pretty small, very lightweight, very easy to use. So as you can see, you can really create a lot of great neutral eye looks with this particular palette and it's really fun. Let's take a look at a few comparisons, namely, the Vizier and the Hindosh. Those are the two that really come to my mind when I look at this palette. So let's start off with the Hindosh palette. This is the Butopsy palette, the first one that was released versus the Joe Baker uh, Desert Road Trip. And again, formula wise, these feel very similar. These are actually pressed pigments. The uh, Bake Up Beauty don't specifically say that they are pressed pigments, but they do have that same type of texture. So let's see how these compare here. So this is the first shade here. I'm gonna go ahead and put them down here. You can see that this is a little bit warmer, but it is similar to the third shade in the Bake Up Beauty palette. Our white is gonna be more stark. We don't have an actual white per se in the Desert Road Trip. This shade here, I'll look at boy, this is probably a little bit more vibrant. Yep, yeah, definitely more vibrant. Let's take a look at feel and real and see how those compare. So we have kind of this deeper brown. It's warmer than the deeper shades here in the Bake Up Beauty. And then kind of this gray shade, it almost kind of goes with this shade here, but it's got a little bit more gray. So overall, you can see that the Hindos shades are going to be deeper, deeper in color. They're also slightly, slightly warmer overall or slightly cooler. They're just not quite the same hue. For the most part, they're, they're warmer, but obviously the gray and the white are gonna be a little bit cooler. So let's take a look at the Viseart. This is the neutral mattes. So I'm gonna go ahead and swatch these on my other arm so we can look at this whole palette. This is one of my favorite eyeshadow palettes. And here we go. You can see these first two shades, they're very warm, they're peachy. Those are not things that are similar to the Bake Up Beauty. And then we have kind of this light shade here and you can see this shade, 
the last one in the first row, this ivory, is going to be similar to the first shade in the Bake of Beauty. Then we have this deep brown in the second row, which is going to be deeper and a little bit more cocoa than anything in Bake of Beauty. We have this kind of terracotta orange. We go into a couple more like warm browns here. And you can see that there is a similarity with this shade here the second to last shade in Bake Up Beauty, um, but this is gonna be a little bit cooler. This one here on Bake Up is kind of like a lighter version of the last one in the middle row on the Viseart Neutral Mattes. Next, we have a true black, a gray. This one here is more of that gray brown and a lighter brown. You can see that these last two shades here do have some similarities with the Bake Up Beauty, Overall, the Viseart are going to be a little bit deeper and more pigmented than the Bake Up Beauty shades. So I hope these comparisons have been helpful. Let's go ahead and take a look at the new Sisley eyeliner. So the Sisley Fido Colstar waterproof eyeliners are, they're my favorite eyeliner. And that's because they're very creamy gel-like texture that goes on, but they really do last and perform well all day. The only thing I don't love is I do prefer those that I can sharpen more easily. However, we do have, you know, the screw and sharpener on the bottom. So we'll take a look at this. Let's swatch this first. Again, this is 11 in Mystic Gold. And you can see it's kind of a warm shimmery gold. Let's take a look at the demos while we talk a little bit about this product. The Sisley Fido Cold Star Waterproof Eyeliners come in a variety of finishes. There are matte ones, there are shimmery, there are some that are more satin-like, and I love these, as I've already mentioned. They retail for 66 US dollars, so they are definitely not an inexpensive eyeliner. They are going to be less expensive on the Selfridges website, so definitely check that out, and I talked about the global shipping program at the beginning of this video in case you skipped ahead to this section. So definitely go back if you're interested in that and hear about that. It was towards the very beginning. Now, according to Sisley, the Fetal Coal Star is an automatic retractable pencil with an integrated pencil sharpener. The creamy and firm tip offers a unique glide and ensures perfect definition with extreme precision. So again, we have the sparkling finish, which are luminous with a little bit of glitter. Mystic are those that are almost black shimmery shades with subtle reflections. This is a mystic gold. So again, it's gonna be a bit of a deeper shade here. And then we also have the matte ones as well. So they're, this formula, as I mentioned, is very creamy. They have a bunch of you know particular oils and ingredients like rosehip oil, vitamin E, and so forth. And these are supposed to withstand rain, humidity, heat, tears, sweat, and oil. They're very long glassing. This is actually one of the only eyeliners that I can wear in my waterline all day without having issues. I have very sensitive eyes. So this is one of my, well, it's my absolute favorite for that's one of many reasons. So let's go ahead and take a look at some comparisons of some other gold eyeliners. Now I have to say, I also really like the Victoria Beckham eyeliners, but for me, I cannot use these in the waterline. I can only use these for a smudged out look. This one here is Smoky Quartz, and this is more of a taupe shade, but I did wanna share that. You can see they both have a similar shimmer to them. And this one here, also by Victoria Beckham, is the bronze, and you can see this is gonna be their typical satin shade. It's a little bit more brown than the Mystic Gold, but it is about the same depth of color. And this is one of the new ones from Victoria Beckham, the Gold LeMay. I actually, I don't like this one personally. This is really gonna be more of a sheer base with some gold sparkles. So it works better more as like an all over eyeshadow color topper type product than as an eyeliner in my opinion. But I did wanna share the color. You can see that the Victoria Beckham is gonna be lighter and cooler. Now the Isam Dual eyeliners, I think these are great as well. So this one here is their gold shade. I'm gonna put this one, oops, I just broke my tip, but I'm gonna put that right there. So this is the Isam, that is the Sisley in Mystic Gold. And this is the Isam in Fire. And let's see how this one compares. Again, more yellow gold. This is gonna be a little bit deeper, has a little bit more orange in it compared to the gold shade from Isam, but it definitely doesn't have that kind of bronzed gold look that the Sisley has. 
And my last comparison is the Flavado and Albedo in gold. And this, again, is also gonna be a little bit more brown. This is gonna be a firmer pencil texture in general. Um, but you can see that's probably actually our closest shade. So I hope those were helpful. As you can see with the wear test, you know, this really performs well in the waterline and the rest of the eye. It, you know, really stays put. So for me, you know, it's one of the few pencils I can wear in the waterline without getting any eye irritation or watery eyes and so forth. So this is definitely a favorite. It's very long lasting. However, it is, it's not a lot of product for the money. It's definitely expensive. These only have 0.3 grams of product, which is definitely not a lot. And especially compared to those pencils that you need to sharpen with a traditional pencil sharpener. Those typically have more because you do end up wasting some of that as you're going through the sharpening process. So this will eliminate a little bit of that, but regardless, it's definitely still a very small amount of product. However, I love it for me. It's worth the money because it performs so well for me. So again, I'd recommend though shopping at Selfridges if you can. And these are made in Italy. So let's go ahead and take a look at favorite product of mine now. Again, another thing that is small, expensive, but totally worth it for me. So this is the Victoria Beckham Baby Blade in taupe. And they, they sent this to me. I was going to purchase this when they had a free shipping promotion or something, but they offered to send it to me. So I've been trying this out for about a week now. This is the Microfine Brow Pencil. So on one side, we have, you know, your typical um, brow, uh, I can't think of what it's called, but the wand for the brow and the little brush. And then on the other side, here is our product. So you can see it is very small, very fine. But what I like about this is I have gone through so many brow products in the past few years trying to find the perfect one. And I love those like drier pencils like the Givenchy brow pencil, the um, Gucci brow pencil, and I love the Tom Ford fiber brow gel. But I have, have not been able to find a pencil like this that I truly love. I've tried so many like the Dior and the Byredo and so forth. This has everything that I want in it. So this is creamy, yet not so creamy that it moves. It will stay pl stay pl in place all day. And I can see a major difference with my brows, yet it's not something that's like an obvious brow product. So let me go ahead and move to the demos. This here is the taupe shade. So you could see here when you're looking at the demos, how easy this is to use. So I just like to make the little lines starting at the base and going up. So I have a little bit more pressure when I, at the base versus as I flick it up. So I think that's great. I love personally, you know, kind of brushing through the brows first, make sure the hairs are kind of all up and I can really see where to place it. And then I add my, add my lines, use a little brush to kind of soften that a little bit. And you can see a major difference between the eye that I did versus the one that I haven't done yet. And I think that really tells, you know, how good this is. Now I've been wearing this, as I mentioned, for about a week. And this is a product that lasts all day on me and I don't have any smudging or smearing. It sets. So I really, really like this one. And thank you so much, Victoria Beckham, for sending this to me. I really appreciate it. So this product, we have a two-year shelf life on this, and this is going to be made in Korea, and we have 0 0.08 grams of product in here. So it's definitely not a lot. Again, it is gonna be a retractable style like the Sisley, so we're not losing product from sharpening, but it's still going to be something that is small. And I can understand why they did that in order to be able to keep it in the slim style packaging and still have it be a micro fine brow product. You're not gonna be able to pack in a whole lot of product. So um, yeah, I have to say though, I would buy this again. And when I use this up, I do plan on purchasing this because I love it that much already. This is now my go-to brow product. So very impressed. I've gotten quite a few compliments in real life on my brows. And actually a few of you guys have commented to me about what I've been doing differently with my brows in the last couple of videos. So this is it. This is the big difference here. I actually haven't had my brows done professionally in a little while now, so my appointment's tomorrow. But it's all been the Victoria Beckham brow blade. 
So let's go through a few comparisons. I actually have been kind of culling through older products. So I have gotten rid of a lot of the brow products that I don't like anymore. So I don't have a ton to look at. This here is the Gucci in taupe. You can see that the Gucci is got, has just a little bit more gray in there. It's a little bit lighter as well. This is again, your pencil based product. So the Gucci pencils, you know, they're more of a powder pencil. And then this is the Gucci in 03. So you can see it's gonna be a little bit deeper than the Victoria Beckham. And a little bit, it's a little bit cooler. It has a little bit more of that espresso color to it. And the Victoria Beckham in taupe is kind of the perfect marriage between those two shades of the Gucci pencil. This here is the Givenchy Mr. Eyebrow Powder Pencil. This came out before the Gucci actually. I have shade two in medium. This has been really hard to find though recently. So here's shade two. You can see that it is similar to the Victoria Beckham. It's a little bit warmer. There's a touch of red in here, but the depth of color is very similar to the Victoria Beckham. It's kind of in between the two Gucci shades, but again, it has a touch of red. This is the Byredo in Sand. And the Byredo actually, it's refillable as well. It comes with a refill, which is very nice. And I have shade 01. So the thing that I don't love about the Byredo is it's a little bit, it's not quite as creamy to put on. And it's a little bit of a waxier formula. So I feel like it doesn't, you know, it just, it doesn't have that same look to it. It it's a little bit lighter unless you really kind of, you know, use a little more force with it. So this is shade zero one. You can see it's a little bit warmer and lighter. Yeah, I have to say it's, this is an okay brow product. So I kept it around, but it's just not a favorite. And this is the Tom Ford fiber brow gel in the shade taupe. So let's go ahead. We'll put this on the other side. So here is taupe. Here is the Victoria Beckham in taupe. And this one here is the Byredo in Sand or 01. And then here we have Gucci Taupe, Gucci 3, which I think if I remember is like something like Chatelaine. And then this one here is the Givenchy in Shade 2. So I hope this was helpful. I have to say, absolutely love this. Now, overall, all of these products, I have to say everything we featured here today was a winner for me. Let's just go over everything a little bit. I think the Hourglass palette is a nice trio. It's great for traveling. It's great just to have on hand. All of the shades work really well for fair and light skin. The powder, you know, I, I think they're okay. This is not going to be a favorite powder of mine. It's probably not what I'm going to use the most. This is the only repeat shade in here. However, the blush and the highlighter, I really like. The powder is definitely something great to have in here for if I was traveling or something like that. But if I'm at home and I have access to all of my other powders, I'm probably going to reach for a different one because I do feel like the hourglass powders can look a little bit dry on the skin. They have that luminosity, but if you look at the texture up close, you can see a little bit of the dryness of the powder particles on my skin at least. So I think it's going to de depend on, you know, what type of skin texture you have. Mine is pretty balanced, so it can look, it leans slightly dry and the powder can look a little bit dry on my skin. But I think people who have you know, more moisturized skin than I do, it, it would be fantastic. So overall though, the blush and the highlighter, I really love those. So definitely a win for me. Bake a Beauty, love this. This palette actually sold out the first day. I believe they've just restocked it. I'll leave it linked down below in the description box. And yeah, you know, I think this is just a great neutral palette and it's so lightweight. You know, I don't carry makeup around with me aside from lipstick on a regular basis. So, but this is definitely something I would pack with me or, you know, if I had like an overnight or something and I just wanted to put a couple things in my bag, this would definitely be something because it's so lightweight, so easy to use. It would be nice if I had a mirror, but you know, that's obviously not gonna be a deal breaker. It would be significantly heavier if it did. As I mentioned, the Clay de Peau cushion, still a favorite of mine. It's one I've been using regularly. The Sisley Phyto Cool Star Waterproof Eyeliner. I love these. I think the new gold shade is a nice welcome addition to the line. I particularly like it for summer and I like just to, you know, have a little bit of, you know, gold and sparkle on the, you know, as eyeliner, particularly in the summer. So 
I think this was a great addition. Happy I picked that up. And of course the Victoria Beckham brow blade or baby blade. I absolutely love this. It is now my new favorite brow product and I think it's gonna be a staple in my routine for a very long time. So definitely loving this. And I have to say, I am going to pick up another one of these before I run out of it. So thank you so much. I'd love to know if you've tried any of these products, what your thoughts are on them. And thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a great day.